this video, we'll be discussing everything you need to know about JavaScript, callback functions and higher order functions. Things like why do we need them in the first place, everything is explained with proper practical examples. So please watch till the end of the video. First of all, let me ask you a favor. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet. And please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Without further ado, let's get started with the following code snippet. First of all, here we have a function called x. Then another function y. Inside this function, I will print this message printing from function y. In JavaScript, we can pass functions as arguments to other functions like we pass variables to a function. So I'm going to pass this function y to this function x here. So this function here, y is called as a callback function because we are passing it as an argument to this function x here. So x, here we call the function x and we want to pass this function y here. So let me add a corresponding parameter here, callback. You can name it whatever you want. So I will name it as callback function. So this function y is passed as an argument to this function x. So this is called as the callback function. You see here we are passing the whole function body with the function name y here rather than calling the function and returning the return value from this function as an argument to this function x here. Here the function is not a callback function because we are not passing the function body as it is. So we have to pass y like this. Now inside this function we have the function body that is passed here. So we can call the function inside this function when necessary. So let's call the function here callback function so which is actually calling this function y here. See here we have the printed message from this callback function here. So we call a function as callback function when it is passed as an argument to other function and then the function receive the callback function can invoke the same callback function when necessary inside its body. Do you remember while defining the language JavaScript we have mentioned the term first class functions. JavaScript is a lightweight interpreted or just in time compiled programming language with first class functions. If we are able to pass functions as arguments to other functions like we do with normal variables then those types of functions are called as first class functions in other words callback functions. So the language JavaScript supports first class functions. Okay, now you understood what is meant by a callback function. Let's look how it is helpful in our programs. Let me get rid of this existing code here. So first of all, we have an array numbers. Within it, we have these much numbers. Now we want to find the smallest, biggest number from this collection or finding the sum of the given numbers inside this array, etc. We have already discussed a similar program in our previous session. Now let's define a function to perform these selected operations here. So here we have the function array calculator. For this function, we have two parameters operation and array. So we'll be calling this function like this. As a first argument, we have passed the operation that we want to perform over this array numbers. To find the biggest number, we'll be passing the argument as find biggest. And for finding the smallest number, we'll be passing find smallest. Now let's complete this function definition here. First of all, we have a variable result into which we'll be saving the result of the operation that we have passed as a first argument here. For that, we have a for loop to iterate through this array here. Then we have a local variable current number to save the element of the current iteration. We are accessing that using the index i here. And we have a switch statement with the operation parameter here. So based on the operation, we have separate cases here. So first of all, we have the find smallest number. So in this statement, we have a ternary operator. Inside the condition, we will check whether the result is smaller than current number, then the result will be assigned to the result variable here. If current number is smaller than the result, then we will save current number to the result here. So in each iteration, the current number will be compared with the result we have here. And the smallest number among them will be saved into the result variable here. And it goes on each iteration. And finally, we will get the smallest number from this collection here. And we will do the exact opposite operation inside this case for find biggest number. 
And finally, here we have the sum operation. First of all, I have initialized the result variable with zero. Here, we only declare the variable, so it will be having the value undefined. So with this knowledge operator, if this variable here is null or undefined, it will be assigned with the value provided here. So for the first iteration, the result variable will be undefined, so zero will be assigned to it. We have already discussed these operators in our operator session. I have given the link in video description and inside the i card top right corner. Currently, you could see this red squiggly line here. Don't bother because this operator, knowledge operator, is a latest addition to the JavaScript. Don't worry if the browser we are running this program is updated, then this will work. In order to avoid this problem from this IDE, we may need to update our extensions regarding JavaScript. Here we have the compound assignment. So result is added with color number and the result will be saved into the same variable result. So here we have defined cases for each operation that we have. And finally, after this for loop here, we just need to print the result variable. So I will do this. Boom, here we have the result one for the operation find smallest number. So for the given collection here, the smallest number is one among these numbers. Now let's try biggest number find biggest. As you can see, 16 is the biggest number among this collection. Now let's try sum operation. So here we have the output 30. Now, if you want to update this function for further operations like sum of squares, we'll be adding more switch cases into this function for each operation we want to implement. But if we redefine this function with callback functions, we can avoid updating this function for operations like these in future. Let me show you how it works. First of all, let me collapse this function here. And we are going to add few more functions for each operation that we want to perform. So here we have the function for finding the smallest number from the collection. It accepts two variables, num1 and num2. The same ternary operator is used inside this function also. In same way, the biggest number from the given two numbers is returned from this function, get biggest. And here we have the final function for adding two numbers, result and value. So first of all, if result is undefined, it will be assigned with the value zero, then sum of result and value will be returned. Now we can modify this function accordingly. First of all, I will rename this first parameter as callback function. Now we don't need this switch statement anymore because inside this callback, we have already passed the operation that we want to perform. So let's remove this switch statement here. Instead, we just need to call the function callback function. For any of these callback here, we have two parameters. First of all, we'll be passing result and then the current number for the iteration. So I will be passing it directly here. We don't need this variable anymore. So the callback function will be invoked into it, result and the current element will be passed. And that's what we are expecting inside these functions here. Now we'll be calling this array calculator like this. As a first argument, we'll be passing any of these functions here as a callback function. To get the smallest number, we just need to pass this function get smallest. That's it. Now inside this array calculator function, after invoking this callback function, all of these callback functions returns the value back to the caller. So we want to save that result into this result variable. See, it is working perfectly fine. If you pass get biggest number, it should return 60. Sorry. We have a problem here. So it is working perfectly fine. Let's try sum. So that's fine. All of them returns the correct result as before. Now, through passing a callback function and invoking the same when necessary makes this function extensible for further operations which works in this same manner, which is looping through an array, one element at a time, and then do some operation on it as specified inside the callback function. At the end of the function, let's print the result like this. For example, sum of squares, cubes, square roots, etc. Now the function which receives a callback function through its parameter is called as a higher order function. In our program here, this function array calculator is the higher order function. And there are functions which can return function back to the caller. So they also comes under higher order functions. 
So a higher order function is a function that accepts callback function through its parameter or it returns a function new function back to the caller like this here. We have already seen a higher order function which accepts callback function through its parameter. In a bit, we'll also be discussing function which returns a new function back to the caller. Before that, let me minimize the code that we have written here. If these callback functions are not required for rest of our program, then we directly pass the function body as an anonymous function inside this function invocation itself. For example, in order to find the smallest number, we'll be passing a function like this. Let me copy this and pasting here. So as a first argument, here we have the callback function to find the smallest number and here we are returning the same inside the output and we can remove this function name from here. So here we have passed the function as an anonymous function expression. We can even simplify this with arrow functions like this. Inside this function, we only have a return statement. So we can simplify this function like this. As a first argument, here we have the arrow function and second argument as an array. Now we don't need these separate function definition here. So most often this is how we pass callback functions to a higher order function. Now if you want to find the biggest number, just use the greater than operator. Now we have the biggest number from the given collection which is 16. So it is that simple. We don't have to declare a separate callback function. We can pass an arrow function like this. Now let me remind you with some built-in JavaScript functions. For example, for each, which is used to iterate arrays like we have done with this for loop here. This function also accepts functions as arguments. And there are a lot of other functions like sort, filter, etc. All of them are higher order functions in JavaScript. So we'll be discussing all of them in future sessions. Callback functions and higher order functions are often used in DOM event handling, which is uh, the manipulation of HTML elements. We'll be discussing that in a separate tutorial. Then during HTTP request and response handling, and then frameworks and libraries are made extensible for any situation through exposing higher order functions like this here. All of them will be demonstrated in future sessions or future tutorials. So here we have created a higher order function which accepts a callback function through this parameter. Now let's talk about the case when a higher order function returns another function back to the caller. So first of all, let me get rid of these quotes here. Now consider this function doubler. Like this name implies, this function will double the number that passed to this parameter num here. Instead of returning the multiplied number, I will just print the message inside this function like this. The received number is multiplied by 2. Now we have another function tripler to multiply the number with 3. And here we have the final function called tripler to multiply the number by 4. Now you could sense similarities between these functions here. All of these functions are multiplying the number by a given factor like 2, 3, 4. These functions or similar functions can be created with a single higher order function. So here we have the higher order function create multiplier. For this function we have a single parameter factor or you could say multiplication factor. From this function we will return a new function like this return function so here we have returned an empty function. In order to see the same, let's call the function inside a log statement like this. See, here we have called the function create multiplier and it is returning this function. You could see the same function here printed inside this dev console. Now let's remove this log statement here. Now let's complete this return function definition here. This function accept a number and inside this function we have this console log statement Within it, we will multiply the number with the factor. Now, in order to create a function to double the given number, we can make use of this higher order function here. So first of all, let me comment this function here and let's create a variable doubler and we'll be calling this function create multiplier into it, we'll be passing two. So here, this parameter is having the value two and this statement returns another function with a single parameter num. And inside the function, the value of this factor parameter will always be two. So currently inside this variable, we'll be having a function like this. Let me copy this and pasting here. Function is having a single parameter num and inside this, 
the value of this factor will be 2. So inside this variable doubler will be having a function with this body. From now onwards we can make use of this function doubler to double a number. If we pass 4 it should print 8. If we pass 5 then it should print 10. See it is working perfectly fine. Now the same higher order function can be used to create functions like these. For example if you want to create a function to triple a given number First of all, let me get rid of these functions here. Let's create a function for tripling given number. So tripler is equal to, we'll call the function create multiplier and we'll be passing 3 into it. Now, this is a function which multiplies the given number by 3. So let's try that here. Tripler into it, let's pass 3. So it should return 9. If we pass 4 here, it should return 12. So hope you understood this concept. Take your time to understand this concept thoroughly. Try to find examples where creating a higher order function like this will help us to create more functions like these doubler or tripler. For example, try to create a higher order function which can return functions to check whether a given number is greater than 10, 20, 30, etc. That's all for this session. In next session, we'll be discussing closures in JavaScript. Let me know your feedbacks in comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel Code of Fiction. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues. See you in next session.